on May the 9th, 2016, a rare spectacle will be seen across the British Isles and most of the Western Hemisphere, a transit of Mercury. Now, Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system, but also the closest planet to the Sun, and that makes it very tricky to spot normally. But during its transit, you'll be able to see it as a black dot moving slowly across the face of the Sun. Mercury passes between us and the Sun every 16 weeks or so, but more often than not, the planet either passes above the Sun or below the Sun, so we don't see it directly. And that's because Mercury's orbit is tilted compared to the Earth's, so we only see it crossing the face of the Sun every so often. In fact, this century, there are only 14 transits. So, how do you view the transit? Well, you can't look at the sun directly because it's so blindingly bright. And even if you have eclipse glasses left over from a previous solar eclipse, they won't work. They will block out the light from the sun, but unfortunately Mercury is just too small to be seen. So you'll need a way of magnifying the view so that you can pick out the disk of Mercury in front of the sun. The best way to view the transit of Mercury is by using a telescope, because then you can magnify the view. But remember never to look down the telescope directly unless you have a solar filter on the front end. Now, if you're wondering where you can get that kind of filter, well, in fact, you can make one yourself by purchasing some Barda filter, which you can just get on the internet and you'll see it's a silvery material. Then you can make a cap out of this material that you put on the front end of your telescope. Now, to make it easier, you may have a telescope cap, lens cap, that looks something like this and has a hole in it. And in that case, you can pop the filter on the inside of your cap and then put that on the telescope. And always remember also to put the filter on the front end and not the eyepiece because you want to block out most of the sun's light from entering the telescope. Once your filter is snugly in place, it's time to start looking at the sun. But actually finding the sun isn't as easy as it sounds. Start off with the lowest magnification on your telescope. That's the eyepiece with the largest number on it, say around 25 millimeters. Use the telescope shadow to check when it's pointing at the sun. Basically, you want to get rid of that shadow. You can then increase the magnification once you've found the sun by using an eyepiece with a smaller number on it. The other way to observe the sun and the transit is to project the sun's image through the telescope. And this idea is very simple. Just point your telescope at the sun and hold a piece of white card as a screen around 30 centimetres or so behind it. Now, as you can't look through the instrument, you have to use its shadow again to judge when you're lined up. You can get an image of the sun on the card, which will probably be out of focus to start with. So focus it up and get a sharp edged image of the sun on the screen. With the telescope, again, use your lowest magnification eyepiece, such as a 25 millimeter eyepiece. To get a larger image, hold the card further away and refocus. But watch out, because the sun's heat could be focused on the inside of the telescope, so it could start to melt the eyepiece. Now, many eyepieces use plastic interior parts, so keep the sun in the centre of the field of view and for short periods only, so that the sun's light goes through the glass only and so that you don't damage the edge of the eyepiece. If you're using this method, then make sure that nobody can look directly through the telescope when you're not around. And also remember to cover up the finder telescope on the side. Now, the timings. Mercury will appear on the left-hand edge of the sun. Now, many telescopes will reverse the image, so remember that this is the trailing edge of the sun in its movement through the sky. You might not see it immediately, but within a few minutes, it should be obvious. Then for around the next seven and a half hours, Mercury moves slowly across the sun's disk. It crosses a third of the way down the disk as seen in the sky, which is the upper edge as seen through most telescopes. Now, because the transit lasts so long, there's a really good chance that you'll get to see at least part of it, even if you don't have perfect weather. But there are also other things that you can look out for on the sun, as well as the black dot of Mercury. 
Well, there are other black spots on the sun's surface, and these are sunspots. Now, they could be larger or even smaller than Mercury. Now, you'll be able to set them apart from Mercury because they don't move during the seven and a half hours, and also they change in number and size from day to day. So you can even look on the internet to see how the sunspots looked the day before. You'll also probably see that the edge of the sun's disk and all of the other features on it, including Mercury, seem to be rippling. And this is nothing to do with the sun itself, but it's caused by our own atmosphere, which is quite turbulent, especially on a warm, sunny day. So what about the rest of the year? What other astronomical events are coming up? Well, in September, there'll be a solar eclipse, but you won't be able to see that unless you're in Africa or somewhere on the Indian Ocean. In fact, the next solar eclipse visible from the UK won't happen until the 21st of August 2017. So make sure you get out and enjoy the transit of Mercury. Have a party, celebrate the event. I'm Lucy Green and I'm Chief Stargazer at the Society for Popular Astronomy. And if you want support or advice on anything to do with observing, pop over to our website www.popastro.com.